Welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. In this vlog, we'll show you how we spent this particular evening at the farm. We made a mixture of different fertilizers to spread over our garden beds. Our tractor bucket was the perfect size to mix all six bags together. The first product we put in was this 10-10-10 all-purpose fertilizer. It's a mix of 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 10% potassium. Nitrogen is a component of chlorophyll, which is necessary for photosynthesis, so you definitely need it in your garden soil. Phosphorus helps deliver the sugars to feed the plant during photosynthesis. Potassium helps in the building of protein and helps reduce the instances of diseases. The next two bags we added were soft cow pelletized soil conditioner. It reduces soil compaction for clay soil like we have. It also helps supply calcium and sulfur without affecting the pH. Calcium provides structural support for the cell walls, and sulfur helps the plants take in nutrients. The last bag we added was Melorganite. It is a slow-release nitrogen fertilizer. The other fertilizers feed everything quickly, while this will stay in the soil much longer to feed the plants over time. They'll only take it in as they need it. Once everything was in the tractor bucket, we used a shovel to mix it all together in order to have a nice, even blend of all the products. We still need to add some limestone to our beds to help raise the pH of the soil. We couldn't get any at the store and our bucket was already almost overflowing at this point, so the lime will have to go in the soil in a few days when we go back to the farm. We'll also bring our pH test kit to ensure we have the proper levels. Take a look at that nice even mixture. We filled little pails with the fertilizer blend and both walked on opposite sides of each bed, sprinkling it along the entire length. Once we finished spreading the fertilizer over the entire garden, it was time to get on the tractor. We used our Kubota LX2610 and the Titan Attachment 60 inch chiller to work all that fertilizer into the garden beds. When we were done with one bed, we would back up to the end of the adjacent bed, drop the tiller, and work our way back towards the front of the garden. A few vlogs ago, we moved 54 cubic yards of soil mix that we had delivered to the front of the property up to the garden, one 54-inch bucket full at a time. The first layer for each garden bed was laid down a few inches thick and then tilled into the existing clay soil. After all 21 beds were done, we evenly spread the remaining soil on top without tilling it into the ground, knowing that we'd be adding fertilizer soon. The most exciting part of our evening occurred once we finished with the garden. It was time to get our new bees into the hive. We ordered three pounds of Italian honeybees with one queen bee. They were shipped in a small wooden crate with screen on either side. It's normal for a small percentage of your bees to be dead on arrival, but more than half of ours were dead. Obviously we weren't pleased about this, and unfortunately there's no guarantee on any of the bees with the exception of the queen. The queen is shipped in a small cage within the crate, so we got her out with only a dozen or so other bees escaping. There's a small cork plugging the only exit for the queen. We remove the cork and replace it with one of our kids' fruit snacks. The other bees will eat through it to free the queen within a few days. This will give the bees time to get acquainted with the queen in their new home. The cage has a little clip that let us attach it on one of the deep foundation frames. Time to get the rest of the bees in the hive. Tapping the crate onto the ground gets the bees off the roof to prevent them from flying out when the lid is removed. Normally you would shake the crate upside down into the hive, but we had so many dead bees and decided to lay it sideways on top of the frames and allow them to get out on their own. We'll close them up and leave them alone for a week before checking on them and removing the crate. This is a feeder that supplies food for the bees before they start collecting pollen and making honey to feed the hive. We added about a half a gallon of sugar water that was made with a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water. 
You pour it in the top and it will go through the small holes of this dome for the bees to fly up and access the sugar solution. The lid that goes on top prevents the bees from falling in and drowning in the sticky syrup. After a month or two, we'll remove the feeder and replace it with 10 medium-sized foundation frames where the bees will make honey for us. Now it's time to add the inner cover and the top cover. This is the waterer we made for our bees using a terracotta pot and saucer. These glass beads give the bees a place to land without drowning in the water. Now our bees are in their new home that is protected by the small electric fence that we set up the previous day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can get updates on our garden, honeybees, and all of the other excitement that happens at Riggin Farm. Please hit the like button and comment below to share your thoughts on how our little farm is coming along. We'll see you next time!